Good evening, everyone. Our first award of the evening goes to a dynamic individual, Congresswoman Veronica Escobar. Who, who proudly represents the 16th Congressional District in El Paso, Texas. Congresswoman Escobar made history on January the 3rd, 2019, when she became the first woman to ever be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in that district. She deserves an applause, yes. This third generation, El Pasoan, is also the first of two Latinas from Texas to serve in Congress. Her impressive work includes serving on the House Judiciary Committee, as well as the House Armed Services Committee. This Latina leader also serves as the co-chair of the Immigration Task Force for the Democratic Women's Working Group and is a member of the new Democrat Coalition. She is the Vice Chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and the Freshman Representative for the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Earlier this month, in response to President Trump's 2019 State of the Union Address, when he credited the construction of a border wall with making El Paso one of the safest cities in our country, Congresswoman Escobar delivered a Spanish language rebuttal on behalf of her community and the Democratic Party. Please help me in giving a warm welcome to tonight's National Legislative Award recipient, Congresswoman Veronica Escobar. Buenas noches. Thank you all so much. I, I, I cannot tell you how humbling this recognition is and how much it means to me. And um, I, I truly believe that I didn't do anything that any of you wouldn't have done had you been given the same privilege that I have been provided in serving my community in Congress. I have the incredible honor of representing El Paso, Texas, the safe and secure U.S.-Mexico border city that has been, unfortunately, the target of so much of this administration's hate and so much of this administration's anti-immigrant, anti-Latino policy. It is such a challenge to represent the community during this very difficult time. And, and as Domingo mentioned in his remarks, El Paso was the site of one of the worst targeted attacks, the worst targeted attack on Latinos in our country in American history. And 2019 was a very, very difficult year for us. We suffered through so much. We saw so much hate aimed at us and truly it felt as though we had a target on our backs. But El Paso has been like Latino communities everywhere. And we have responded in the face of hatred and in the face of bigotry with love, with goodwill, with kindness, and with generosity. That's who we are as Latinos. That's what we were taught. That's all that we know. You know, today, earlier, as I was getting my ashes, I was asked by a reporter about what it, it meant to me to, to be able to receive ashes on Ash Wednesday. And I was explaining to her that in my home, I was taught that you, you love one another, that you show kindness to the stranger, that you treat others as you would want them to treat you and that whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. And that was part of the religious upbringing that I received, that's part of my faith, and those are the values that El Paso, Texas, and those are the values that the Latino community has instilled in me. But make no mistake, we are all under attack. All Latinos, all immigrant communities, all of us who have faced so much adversity, 
need to dig deep and find our strength and our voice because this is indeed one of the most important years for all of us. This is a year when in so many ways we truly are not just fighting for our planet, not just fighting for our country, not just fighting for our democracy, but we are fighting for our lives. And August 3rd of 2019 in El Paso, Texas should be evidence enough for all of us as to what is at stake if we don't use our voice and if we don't empower everyone around us to use their voice. And we have to hold people accountable. That is part of using our voice. 2019 was a horrific year. We have to make sure that we empower our people and that we change the future and that we change the course that this country is on because our very lives depend on it. But I, I want to thank you all for the love and the strength that you give me, for all of the incredible support that I receive. I cannot tell you, I, I, I can't go anywhere without folks saying, I'm from El Paso, or I lived in El Paso, or in many respects, people who've never even been to El Paso have told me, I feel like I know El Paso. And that's because of our shared experience, our shared values, and the shared lucha. So tonight, I, I give you tremendous gratitude. My heart is full for this recognition. Thank you so much for it. I accept it, not because I have done anything extraordinary or anything that any one of you wouldn't have done, but I do it on behalf of one of the greatest communities in this country, El Paso, Texas. Thank you all. Buenas noches. Please welcome to the stage LULAC's formal national president. Thank you all.